Happy Sunday there, wine lovers. It's Stephanie Miskew, certified sommelier and author of the blog, The Glamorous Gourmet. And welcome to my weekly Facebook Live show, Wines of the Week. I'm here with you every Sunday at five o'clock to, to help you empower your palate and share some wonderful wines you won't want to miss. And it is so great to be back with you all today. I can't tell you, I hope you've all been having a great summer. And I'm really excited because on this Sunday, I have a great show for, for you today about a very hot topic. In fact, it's something that I get asked about quite a bit, and that is wine clubs. Have you ever joined one by any chance? Because I really get a lot of questions about these. So I'm gonna share some very helpful tips, um, what to look for when you're shopping for a wine club. And the wines I'm gonna be tasting today are actually from Martha Stewart's new wine club. Who else is very excited about that? Um, I'm thrilled to see that she's getting in the wine game uh, with her attention to detail and just her overall good taste. Uh, I think she's gonna really uh, do a great job. So anyway, we're gonna taste through the wines today. And um, oh, and it's great to see you guys checking in. Like I said, I've missed you guys. And um, yeah, I think we're gonna have some fun. So if you can hear me loud and clear, go ahead, throw up some emoji love. Let me know in the comments section where you're watching from. So uh, so yeah, like I said, I get a lot of questions about wine clubs and, uh, and the offers are everywhere, right? I, I've been collecting all the offers I see for wine clubs everywhere. And I mean, it's just, it's just kind of nuts. So I'm gonna go over as we get jump into the wines, I'm going to uh, share some helpful tips with you, but it's just crazy. I mean, non-wine companies are offering wine clubs. It's just, it's just nuts. So anyway, I'm anxious to dive in. So let's see who is, uh, before we dive in, let me see who in the gang is here. Like I said, it's great to see y'all. And um, da, da, da. oh, Nancy, hey, great to see you. Hope you lovebirds are still enjoying your weekend and Roland's at the villages. Whoop, whoop. Good to see you, Roland. Uh, let's see, John Litton, howdy. Great to see you, my friend. And, uh, oh, and Marcy Joe, great to see you too. And Oscar, wow. Thank you guys for, um, for, for showing up. I'm, again, it's great to see you. I can't wait to enjoy some wine with you. Does anyone else have something in their glass at the moment that they'd like to share? By all means, go right ahead. I love to hear it. So, um, anyway, I really want to get to get to the subject matter because this is something I'm pretty passionate about. So again, if you're just joining us, my name is Stephanie Miskew. I'm a certified sommelier, author of the blog, The Glamorous Gourmet, and today we're talking wine clubs. So again, so our tasting today is going to feature four selections uh, from Martha Stewart's new wine club, and all of the selections today are rosés. And I was actually glad that that's what they sent me because let's face it, um, some tastings of rosés could be kind of boring, you might think, like, gee, four pink wines, like, how can they really be that different? Or how can you really get a sense of what a wine club's going to be about from four rosés? Well, actually, I think you can tell a lot. And I think that this uh, wine club actually shows great nuance just in these selections of rosé. So, like, right off the bat, I was very impressed. Um, even though three I'm um, tasting today are from France, one is from Italy, but they're all very different colors from very different grapes, and they all have very different aroma and flavor profiles. They're, it's, it's, um, it's an interesting study in rosé. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and jump right in with uh, wine number one. Let's see, we have the Georges. This is a mouthful, so bear with me. We have the Georges Vigoro Voluptu IGP Cote de Lot Rosé from France. Uh, it's a 2016 vintage. We would expect it to be a young vintage like that since it is a rosé. 13% uh, alcohol. And all of these wines are under $20. They're all very reasonably priced. There's nothing um, very you know, fancy about them price-wise. But um, I think they... They may or may not deliver on the palate, we'll see. So, uh, but the first wine, uh, wine club warning sign I want to share with you before I even dive in, because you can learn a lot about a wine club just by looking at the names of the wines. The first warning sign is, if you Google the name of the wine and nothing comes up, look out. 
because a lot of wine clubs uh, that, you know, they say they're, they're sourcing their wines from boutique wineries. Uh, you know, they have special agreements with producers. Well, that's code that for they're buying a bunch of bulk juice and slapping a label on it. I'm here to say, I feel very strongly about that. So the first thing when you're shopping for a wine club, go on their website, look for some of the names on the wines and whether it's a wine rating site like Wine Spectator or you know you just Google in general. And if you're Googling that producer's name and nothing comes up, I think that's your first red flag. And I'm happy to say that with all of the wines in my Martha Stewart Wine Club shipment, they are all from a uh, well, respected winemakers from well-respected regions. And I even asked um, the company itself, the one who sent me the, the samples, and these are samples. And they say, yes, Martha only works with uh, very reputable producers and winemakers, domestic and foreign, you know, that are already established. It, so they're not just buying juice or anything like that, but that's something to, um, to keep in mind. So let's go ahead and try this delicious wine. And this is a, um, more of an obscure little region, Cote d'Alot, it's actually in Southwest France, um, just southeast of Bordeaux, actually. Normally, when we're talking Cote de Provence, we're talking, you know, Provence more the um, southeast France. But this is southwest, and this is a region that is actually known for producing a black, what they call black wine from Cahors. And this wine, these wines are made from actually the Malbec grape which is known over there as Cot, C-O-T. You'll find that with certain grapes, they have AKA, they have aliases depending on where you find them. And if you find Malbec in the Southwest of France, it's most likely going to be called Cot. So this little beautiful rosé is produced from 100% Malbec. I know we don't come across that very often, which I thought was very cool. And you might even notice that the color, this is a little darker than you're going to see in your uh, Provençal rosés. Uh, your classic Provençal rosés. And I like that they didn't just all feature cookie cutter, perfect, bright, rose petal pink wine. So you've got a little more depth of color. As you would expect, Malbec is a thick skin grape. It produces inky red wines. So you think that the color might be a little deeper. So uh, let's go ahead and jump into our tasting. And for those of you who might be joining us for the first time, uh, I like to do the six S's of tasting. So we have C, we have swirl and snip, sip and swish, and then savor or spit. And I always like to savor with you guys on Sundays. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, anyway, okay, so we just talked about the color of the wine and how it's unique. Let me put it with the white background. White background provides a great way to really compare that color and really get a feel for what it's like. So yeah, it's more of a, a deeper pink. So now I'm gonna go ahead and roll into our next two S's that I like to pair together, which are swirl and sniff. Yeah, and that is um, beautiful. You might expect that it's going to be like bright red fruit, but actually I'm getting some mineral on this wine. I'm getting a little earthiness, but it's also accompanied by beautiful, like ripe cherry notes too. So it smells really, really good. So I'm gonna roll right into sip and swish. And again, if you're joining me for the first time, I always like to tell you to sip and swish the wine because it's only when it's like hitting every flavor receptor in your mouth that you can really get a sense for the wine's texture or you know, it's acid or tannin uh, structure, but yeah, and on the palate, that's got like I'd say it's like a medium-bodied rosé. It's got a little bit of, it's got some nice body to it. Beautiful notes of again that ripe cherry, ripe strawberry, but it's not. It, it's got some complexity too. It's got a little earthiness, and again that lovely acidity that really balances it out so nicely. And I think that's what makes rosé so food friendly as well. Um, yeah, I don't know even the last time I've had a rosé made from 100% Malbec, so I think this one is it's a gem. It's, uh, it's different, again, than our classic Provençal rosé, but just very flavorful, lots of personality, and, um, and delicious. I give it two thumbs up. So uh, any questions about, has, has anyone out there ever had 100% um, Malbec rosé? Or what do you guys, any questions about this wine so far? See what you guys are up to. Oh, new comments. Let's see. Ba, 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 ba. 
Okay, Nancy says, we are a member of the Mount Fair Wine Club. That is the only way you can buy it, and it's so worth it. And Nancy, I'm actually glad you brought that up, because when you're talking about a winery's wine club, I think that is a great way to get to, if you find a winery that you just love, and I think that's a great thing to do is to sign up for their wine club because you get you get releases that you can only get from the winery. It's a great way to really know, get to know that particular winery. So the wine clubs I am talking about right now are mostly like, you know, the non-winery wine clubs. Like there's Macy's has a wine club now. You know, there's airlines that have a wine club. That's kind of what I'm talking about. But I think if you want to get to know a particular winery better, it's a great a great thing to do is to join the wine club, just like what you said. So if the only way you can get those wines is to join their wine club, then of course you're going to do it, which is wonderful. And I know we've all visited wine regions before, and you come back, and all of a sudden, before you know it, boxes are showing up on your doorstep, and you know. But that's all fun and good. And like I said, you want to you want to get to know more what that winery has to offer. It's a great way to do it. So when I'm talking about you know, some of these things, it won't apply to those wine clubs, but I like them. Uh, and let's see, Oscar says, great tip. Those junk mail, yes, those junk mail wine club offers. You've got to look out for them. I know. <laughs> I just say my, uh, uh, a family member uh, called to say, yes, I just signed up for a wine club. I got uh, 20 bottles of wine for $5. Ah, red flag. Red flag. Um, but anyway, you got to be aware of them. And when Oscar says, my wine clubs are predominantly from Napa Sonoma vineyards that I have visited. Exactly. I did try the Virgin Wine Club for almost a year, but recently dropped them for mere control of, of what I was getting. Exactly. And like I said, if you've had a great experience with a particular wine club, then go for it. There are good ones out there, but I would unfortunately say the majority are not or they're hit or miss or, you know, anyway, so I'm just giving you some helpful advice uh, on um, on how to shop for them. And Del and Oscar says, you know me, Gigi, if it's not cab, it usually doesn't end up in my glass. I love a man who knows what he likes. That's a good thing. Yeah, and 20 for $5 sounds like Columbia Record House back in the 80s. I remember that. That's so funny. Oh my God, you guys make me laugh. I've missed you. All right, so let's move along now. So that, again, that was our George Figaro Voluptu IGP Cote de Lot Rosé. Uh, and just a little gem, I think, at $12 a bottle. And as part of this uh, selection, I think it's, it's fabulous. Let me have another sip real quick. Way to go, Martha. You know, I think Martha is like perfectly suited for the wine, the wine biz. She has such attention to detail and, and quality that I think, I think she'll probably do real good. Okay, so the next rosé we're going to try, let me wipe off the bottle before I show it to you, is, it is the Villa Ruby de Bernard Magres. It's from the 2016 vintage. It's their Caress de Rosé. Uh, again, a beautiful bottle. You might notice it looks a lot like another very popular rosé, which I'm sure that's no accident. But right off the bat, you'll probably notice this um, looks almost more of the type of Provençal rosé we're used to seeing. It's a little lighter than our previous wine. Let me pour myself a little, a little more in my glass. Um, but I'm using this wine to demonstrate the wine club warning Number two, something to keep in mind is who is curating the wine club? Oftentimes you see, you know, the, the great price and award-winning wines, we'll get to that in a minute, but who is the name associated with picking those wines? And if you can't find that information, I'd be very, very wary. For this wine, for instance, not only do you have Martha's name associated with it, which is a good thing, uh, we also have Bernard Magrez, who is a very well-respected, legendary um, Bordeaux wine magnet. He owns uh, four Grand Cru Class A uh, Chateau. He's very well known. He's been making wine for over 40 years or something like that. So very well respected. So when you see these wines associate or these names associated with these wines, that should also give you an extra measure of, um, you know, of confidence that you are buying wine that, I mean, if these people are putting their names on it, 
it's probably got to be good. So again, definitely something to keep in mind. So uh, this, uh, the vineyards for this wine, I love this um, this visual. They're uh, nestled in the Mediterranean coast between the sea and the Southern Alps. And for those of you, how many of you have ever been to Provence? And if you've been to Cannes or Antibes and you're there by the ocean, you're looking at the, the Mediterranean. And then when you look back to your left, you're looking at like the southern end of the Alps. You're looking at the most beautiful mountains. Just to think of those vineyards. No wonder those vines are happy. I'm, I'd be happy there. I am happy there too. But anyway, it's just a beautiful place to grow grapes. And this wine is a blend of four grape varieties. We have Muscat, Merlot, Grenache, and Senso, all from 25-year-old vines grown on limestone soils, which is predominant in the area. So, all right, let's go ahead and jump into our little tasting of this wine. So right away, when we're comparing it to our last previous wine, we can see the color is much, much lighter. This is definitely that kind of rose petal pink, very pale rose petal pink we've talked about um, during the summer of rosé. And I know the summer of rosé is winding down. I thought this would be a great way to kind of you know, wind it down and the pink hair is getting a little lighter too, but boy, has it been fun. Um, but again, we love the color of this rosé is beautiful and, and that's the beauty uh, of rosé, that no color is quote unquote right. It's all depending on the type of wine that the winemaker is trying to make. So I think that's a gorgeous color. So now I'm gonna go ahead and swirl and sniff. Again, we swirl to really crank up the volume on the wine, uh, the aromas of the wine. And then you want to just stick your nose in that glass as far as it will go without touching the wine. <laughs> yes, and as you might expect, the aromas on this wine, much more subtle, much more delicate, but just beautiful notes of, again, that limestone soil. There's a beautiful minerality, little rose petal, and very subtle, subtle raspberry, red berry aroma. Very, um, very delicate. But let's go ahead and swirl, or I mean, and sip and swish. my little swish dance yes and just again beautiful beautiful on the palate much more delicate but um definitely softer red fruit you get that softer delicate raspberry citrus a little bit of white peach maybe a little white flower that is just it's lovely it's lovely and delicate um yeah, and a nice bright acidity, but not too much. I know sometimes rosés can be almost too acidic, uh, but this one is very well balanced and just a, just a really beautiful wine. This one I would say is more a, of an a, aperitif, um, at, whereas our, our Voluptu that we, we had previous to that could definitely pair with pro probably a wider range of foods. This one might be nice for a light salad or maybe goat cheese or something like that. But again, you don't want to pair it with something that's really going to overpower it. But still a lovely, a lovely effort, I have to say. Yeah, the again, it's the Villa Ruby de Bernard Magres Cares de Rosé. Um, and just a beautiful one. This one's 11.5% alcohol. They're roughly all about the same, except for the last one. But we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. So, uh, any questions about this rosé so far? Let's see what we got. Roland says, oh, please repeat the name of the wine. I think I did. And again, I will put this on the in the show notes, I promise. The Villa Ruby de Bernard Magres Cares de Rosé. And again, I'll, I'll put that online, I promise. Um, oh, and Amanda, we recently joined Plonk Wine Club, and so far we're very satisfied. Good. I'm glad to hear that. And it's again, there are definitely good ones out there. You just you just need to kind of find them. Or I have some other other advice for you at the end of the show. But they they definitely do exist, and I'm glad to hear that. And you know what? When you're satisfied, you want to spread the word about about your experience, right? So thank you for sharing that. We appreciate that. And uh, Oscar says, hey, Kathy, thanks for joining to see the Glamorous Gourmet. Awesome. Yeah, Martha's classic line, it's a good thing. You got it. Thanks for noticing. <laughs> yeah, been a fan of Martha since, gosh, since the, the early 90s. I remember she had that show on at 1030 
every Saturday morning and my friends and family knew if they called any time between 10.30 and 11 in the morning, that phone was not getting answered. <laughs> oh, and Brad says, what could you pair that food-wise with? And I think you're talking about this wine. This wine, I would go with something more, a, a little bit lighter, like an aperitif, but the last one, the 100% Malbec Rosé, you could pair that with anything from charcuterie to even, I think, roast chicken. Very versatile when pairing with food. So yeah, I'm refreshing to just drink or pair. Exactly. Okay. I think I got everybody's questions. Let me make sure I'm going in the right way here. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and move on. And again, if you are um, watching this video after the live broadcast, please go ahead and ask questions and leave comments as if you were watching it live. I promise I will get back to you. I touch base on these videos quite frequently, so um, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Okay, so our third rosé from the Martha Stewart Wine Club is, dun, 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 it's the Racine Cote de Provence Rosé. Again, this is our Cote de Provence Rosé. It's a 2016 vintage, 12.5% alcohol. So Cote de Provence, that is kind of the birthplace of rosé, right? I think after the summer of rosé, we pretty much know that. Um, and I think this is a wonderful example. Again, this wine comes from a very well-respected name, Bruno Lafon, who is known for uh, having his such history with the Burgundy wine region. But again, you see that name in, in addition to Martha's on this wine, and it's, it's a, an extra vote of confidence for you when you're kind of looking as to whether you want to join that wine club or not. But Cote de Provence, obviously, as I said, the birthplace of Rosé, very well established established region. Um, this one's maybe a little darker than our last one, but it still very much looks like a Cote de Provence Rosé, which again, is kind of that pale, very pale rose petal pink color that we've all, um, uh, you know, gotten to know over the Rosé revolution of the past few years. But um, Let's see, oh, and this wine is compared, so the first one was 100% Malbec. The second one was a blend of predominantly Muscat and Merlot. This one is predominantly Cinso. Uh, that's another grape that's very uh, popular in the south of France. But So let's go ahead and jump into our tasting. So again, so far we have three rosés that, they're all from France, but very, very different wines. So again, you can see how that, you, I wish I could give you a sip through the screen there. But again, this is somewhere between our first two rosés. It's not quite as dark as the first one, and it's not quite as light as the second. Uh, but still a beautiful, somewhere between a rose petal and a salmon pink. Gorgeous color, but no, again, no browning around the edges. That's another thing with wine clubs, that um, you want to make sure all the vintages are, are current. You don't want any... 2013 rosé that's browning or you know salmon color so that's something to watch out for and also this is wine club warning number three is the club associated with a wine entity or like i said is it from an airline a clothing store or a non-wine magazine and like i said i've been collecting these here's here's the thing here's macy's has a wine club now macy's i imagine you can pay for it with your macy's card so that just doesn't seem right. And again, 15 wines for only $89.99. Well, I guess that's a little bit, uh, um, that's kind of pricey actually. Look, and you get coupons like you get, I mean, I'm a Macy's fan and you get these. I never thought I'd see these for a wine voucher. How funny is that? But yeah, I, I probably want to steer clear of the Macy's Wine Club unless anyone else uh, um, has any recommendations or, or her is, you know, experienced it and likes it. But again, I mean, not to single any wine club out, but you know, you look, you Google the wines that they, they're not, you know, they don't exist outside of this club. So maybe not. Um, also Money Magazine has a wine club too. Now, again, this is from a company called First Leaf, uh, but still even Money Magazine has its own wine club. And then, uh, yeah, and then there's clubs like First, that, you know, you get these all the time that, you know, the offers for, um, Three bo here's one of those offers. Three bottles, three bucks. Free shipping, no kidding. Hmm, you might want to scratch your head and think twice is all I'm saying. But, um, and also the, yeah, the Wall Street Journal has its own wine club. See, Wall Street Journal. Important thing to note though, the wines are not, are not curated by the people who write about wine for the Wall Street Journal. Just an important note of distinction. But again, 
I'm just telling you to do your own research. I'm not, I don't mean to single anybody out. These are just the, the ads that I keep seeing time after time. So I know, and I know there's certain airlines have, you know, their own wine club. So just might want to stick with a wine related entity. You know, who's picking the wines and, or maybe you've been a fan of them for a while or just, just be smart. That's all I'm saying. All right. So let's go ahead and jump into our, continue our tasting of this wine. And I'm going to go ahead and swirl and sniff lovely nose that on the nose and I, I swear there's something about Coach of Provence Rosé I swear if I you, even if I were blind tasting these this is the one that has I, it has notes of lavender I something about the lavender field somehow makes its way in the wines but initially when I was tasting or smelling it's like citrus um, peach lavender and this this one is more citrus and stone fruits than say red berries which I thought made it unique as well so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, sip and swish. Yes, and on the palate, mm, beautiful notes of blood orange and peach and mango and apricot. Yeah, that's, it's kind of steering away from the red berry thing and going much towards the citrus tropical fruit um, thing and it's got beautiful acidity too again and all these ones are so balanced too very impressed by that as well you've got the flavor the acid the little bit of tannin from the the skin contact but it's all beautifully balanced as well so so far we're doing pretty darn good with the Martha Stewart wine club so um, any questions about any of our wines so far let's see what we got Astra says, do you know if she, Martha, actually picks these or does she just trust a SOM on staff? I check, but I'm on my phone and don't want to lose you. I actually check. She tastes and picks all of these herself is what, what I was told. And I believe it. She is such a stickler for quality and stuff. And even when you go on her website, it's her doing a lot of the tasting notes for the wines. So, you know, she's a woman who knows what she likes. So, uh, yeah, I, am in, I, I believe her. I believe her. I don't think she'd put that on there. If, you know, maybe she consults with other people, but I think ultimately it's her palate that makes the final decision. So, um, Oscar's at Lost Leaders to start off with these initial offers. You got it. They hook you in. And then again, I'm not singling anyone out, but I researched this quite a bit. And there's been a lot of complaints about some of the wine clubs that once you sign up, it's impossible to get any customer service after that. Or you just, again, you want to do your homework. I'm not saying they're all bad. You just really want to, you know, if you want to pick X club, search under reviews of that club and not just, and you especially want to look at the comment sections on those reviews. Sometimes those are paid reviews and you really want to see what people have to say in the comment section under those posts. You will really learn a lot, let me tell you. And I, I like that we have the access to that now. So just, you know. So keep that in mind. Oh, Brad Busher says, thoughts about the Wall Street uh, Journal Wine Club. I have not experienced it personally, so I cannot comment. It might be great. Um, but again, there, there's not one person who curates it. You don't know who's curating it. Um, and again, the, the three, you know, the, the, the funny bargains and the deals. I, I don't know, but you could try it and let us know, Brad. <laughs> I'm gonna come over after and, and we'll talk. Uh, let's see. Anyway, so yeah, just again, things to keep in mind when you're shopping for wine clubs. So let's go ahead and move on to our final wine from our Martha Stewart Wine Club selection. And uh, this is a little treat, I have to say. Oops, let me wipe this off so I can show this to you. Okay, so this is a sparkling rosé. It's the Abazia Rosé, Abazia di San Guadenzio Moscato Rosé Dolce from the Piedmont region of Italy. It's a non-vintage blend as we would expect. 7% alcohol. Does anyone remember what we can tell from the alcohol content in a wine? By any chance I think I'm going back a little ways but you know if we see that that alcohol content is 7% what might we be able to infer about that wine I'll play the jeopardy thing jeopardy theme do 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 no I'm kidding um, but does anyone know anyone well I'm gonna tell you in the interest of time whenever you see that the alcohol content is kind of 11% or below you can uh, Abazia, it is a Fran wine, Oscar. You can infer that the wine is probably gotten a, is probably a little sweet. 
because if we think of fermentation, fermentation is where yeast turns sugar into alcohol. But if all of the, the sugar isn't fermented, you don't have all, you know, alcohol that's usually sometimes somewhere between 12 and 15%. So again, we see 7%, we think there's got, there's probably some sugar left in that wine, but it's not a bad thing. These wines are, can be absolutely delicious as I think this one is. So let me pour myself a little more. Um, and again, like I said, here you've got four rosés, different, so different. This is a beautiful little study in rosé, and I think that's one of the benefits of tasting wine together. You know, if you're gonna open one bottle, open another one, compare, contrast. I think that's how you learn. Um, but again, the, the family has been making wine since the 1800s from, again, the Piedmont region, a very um, well-known region, well-respected region. The Santero family owns and manages the property, very well-known in the region. And this is where Barolo and Barbaresco come from. So, you know, the famed Nebbiolo grape. Uh, but it's also where Moscato comes from. So, and that, it's been so popular lately. And again, I think there's good and bad examples of Moscato, but it definitely is a delicious wine on a hot summer day when you just want to sip something. Again, not high in alcohol. It's 7%. It's a good sipping wine. Uh, but again, it's made from the Moscato grape. And what do we know about Moscato? Highly aromatic, highly fragrant, has so much going on in that respect. Um, and again, it's made using the Charmont method, which is much more uh, cost effective. That's why this wine can be, you know, around $15 a bottle. Um, it's a lot less labor and cost intensive than the method traditionnel, which is the champagne method. So I like everything about this wine so far. So let's go ahead and do our guided tasting of our fourth and final wine of the day. And you can see, I mean, that is just a beautiful little bubblegum pink if I if I will say that, and I'm gonna um, love it. And I, I know I usually don't like to swirl sparkling wine, but you can see the little bubbles in there kind of bubbling up to top. It, it's more frothy. It's got a beautiful frothiness to it. Um, but again, I'm gonna roll right into, uh, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna swirl because it's sparkling. We don't like to swirl sparkling wines because it dissipates the bubbles and we don't wanna lose our bubbles. So I'm gonna go right into sniff and oh my God, that's just, on the nose, it, it's lychee, like that sweet lychee fruit, strawberry, raspberry, but it's not too powerful. It, it's reserved, but it's just, it's more delicate aromas of that, but just, and again, a little bit of that mineral minerality going on too. I like, I can't, I'm like a compulsive swirler. I, I can't, I can't help it, sorry. So now comes sip and swish. Yes, and that is just delightful, delicate, definitely sweet, but balanced by a nice acidity. Beautiful notes, again, of raspberry and lychee and uh, strawberry, a little hint of watermelon even, but just bright, and Fran would love this Oscar, she would. It, it's, it's delicious, it's the perfect summer wine. And again, it says dolce on the bottle, dolce means sweet, so that's another tip off. If you didn't know the alcohol content trick, you'd see dolce and you would automatically know that that wine was a little sweet. Um, but again, just a lovely lineup. Oh, and let, let me share my final um, wine club warning sign before, before I, I go any further. Another thing to look out for is the plethora of awards. I think when you come across these wine clubs that, you know, they, I mean this, you know, awards from here, awards from there, I think you really need to uh, do your research. I mean, cause some of these wine clubs, you know, they're not cheap. So you wanna look into, uh, cause some of these awards are from, you know, uh, contests uh, organized by the wine clubs. So are they awarding themselves the awards? Where are the awards coming from? And, uh, you know, unless they're from a very reputable, you know, um, wine competition, they might not mean as much as the ads might lead you to believe that they do. So anyway, again, just do your homework. It's just a good thing to, to think about. Um, but any questions about our, this, again, this last wine is the Abbazia di San Guadenzio Moscate Dolce Rosé from the Piedmont region of Italy, a little non-vintage uh, sparkling wine. Yes, it is a great color, Roland. I know, it's beautiful. Oscar says, the wine came in second, out of, I know, the wine came in second out of two entries. 
unbelievable silver medal <laughs> you're right you know we we have to be smart and you and unfortunately you see that show up in with many products whether it's you know whatever they're advertising on a lot of these channels sometimes you sign up and you can't get off the list and it's just a hassle so just do your homework is all I'm saying and then yeah it's not a bad thing and then just something to keep in mind I think maybe even although I have to say I think so far, Martha Stewart's club is wonderful. It's from a reputable woman who we know and love. She's got some great winemakers, great regions. The website is wonderful, so helpful. They offer many different packages, you know, whether you want three bottles, six bottles, a case. Um, it has some great options. But, you know, if you didn't want to go the wine, uh, wine club route, just befriend your local retailer. That's my key. I've been saying that since the beginning. Find that, that retail wine store in your hood and make a, you know, establish a relationship with them. And then that's your great, a great source for recommendations. I mean, I'm here too and happy to guide you and, uh, and happy to help you empower your palate. But, um, again, I think that relationship could even be better than, um, you know, than, uh, than a wine club. But again, I think this one's a lovely one if you wanted to dip your toe in the water and try. And again, I, I'm just, you know, I'm a Martha fan. What can I say? I've never been disappointed by anything I've purchased from her, you know, ever. So again, uh, so just to recap, let's see. And actually, let me see if there's any questions. I'll get to them too. But just to recap, the wine club warning signs. The first can you find the wine anywhere online when you Google it or on any wine rating websites? If you can't find the name of the wine anywhere, that's a sign to beware. Number two, who is curating the wine club? Is there a wine expert, a sommelier, or somebody that you trust curating, um, curating the wines that are picked? And number three, where is the club be wine club being offered from? Is it from a wine-related entity or is it from a clothing store or a magazine or an airline? Not that it's necessarily bad, but you might want to try to stick to something, you know, in the wine realm. And then the last one, beware of all the awards. They don't, they don't always mean what the advertisements lead you to believe. So just do your research and I think that will really help to guide you towards the wine club that's best suited for you. Um, so anyway, let me see if there's any other questions. Otherwise, so good to be with you guys again. And Roland says, Roland says, I get many wines from wineexpress.com. Josh Farrell recommend, Josh Farrell's recommendations. Oops, hold on. Josh Farrell recommendations, and I have been very satisfied. Plan to look at Martha Stewart. Great, and if anyone else has any other clubs they recommend or have had good experiences with, please pop them in the comments section below. I love that you all are, you know, talking and, and um, sharing advice and things like that. That's, that's what it's all about. Brad says, I missed your comments about joining a vineyard wine club like Joseph Phelps. Thoughts? Yes, and that is absolutely different from the, the wine clubs I'm talking about. If you want, like a particular producer, Brad, like Joseph Phelps, join their wine clubs. It's a great way to get to know that producer, and oftentimes they have special wines that you can only get if you're a member of the club. So I think if you are a fan of a certain winery, I absolutely think that joining the wine club is a great way to get to know them better and have access to uh, you know a greater selection of their wines. So I do recommend that, absolutely. Thanks for asking that again, because I think that was in the beginning and some people missed it. And Oscar says, what a fun and energetic show today. Loved it. Keep it up. Great info for your peeps and fans. Well, thank you so much, Oscar and Brad and Nancy and Marcy Joe and uh, all you fabulous people. And uh, Brad, I think I got you. I'm trying to go back. But thanks to all of you for tuning in today. It's been a while. I've missed you, but I'm back. I will be back next Sunday, August 26th, with another fun-packed episode of Wines of the Week. And my ask to you is, if you know one person that would uh, benefit from this show or might find this show interesting, tag them in the comments below. Just type their name in the comments section and let them know about it. I would really appreciate it. But again, so great to be back with you all. I'll put all the names of the wines and the uh, links to Martha's website in the show notes, and I will po be posting that very shortly. Thanks again for tuning in, and I look forward to seeing you all again next week, if not before. Cheers.